Hey everyone and welcome back to another video from my new studio, at least for now. It probably won't look like this in the next video, but this is what we're going for for now. So as you guys know, lots of things are happening and I'm buying some new companies. I sold off uh, Microsoft, Nextera Energy, MongoDB and Activision Blizzard, they're out. In comes a few new companies and this is the first one. So the first company I'm buying, and I've already bought it, no worries, is Netflix. So uh, first off, I like Netflix. Uh, I like the service. Uh, I've had it for many, many years. Everyone I know has it. And I think over the years, uh, Netflix has improved dramatically. And I used to um, unsubscribe all the time. I would watch a movie or a TV series, then I would unsubscribe because there was nothing else to do. Uh, but not anymore and every time I log on Netflix there's like three new shows and the other day I just watched this fantastic show and I went you know what I'm investing um, I think Netflix has the best content in the world they have the biggest library the best library and they're adding the most content and most of the content they're making now is in-house which is the most important thing for a media and entertainment company is to have IP so intellectual property if you can churn out show hit show after hit show after hit movie uh, you're really the 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 king of your own destiny and they're doing better than any other company uh, in in terms of streaming service i don't really think anyone can compete with netflix not even disney disney plus for me was a huge disappointment and so i i'm just watching netflix and in the last three or four years they've produced shows like queen's gambit stranger things the crown la casa de papel narcos house of cards dope cobra kai uh, lupin tiger king orange is the new black ozark and The Witcher. That's over like the three, last three or four years, most of them in the last two years. And the this is more shows than, I mean, a Disney and HBO has combined, uh, has made combined, at least in terms of hit shows. And I recently bought a new TV. And on the remote control, there's a Netflix button. And every single control I watched, I looked at in the store, had a Netflix button. So when a company has its own button on a remote control, you know that something's up. And it comes standard with every TV, I think, and even new cars. So in my Tesla, uh, I have Netflix, uh, YouTube as well, but all I watch there is Netflix. And imagine how many Teslas and other EVs are going to come on the road. And if cars become self-driving, people are just gonna be watching Netflix while they drive. As I said, everyone I know has a Netflix account and many of those accounts are shared. So more than one person, usually two, three, maybe even four people are using the account, which means the chance of any Netflix account being deactivated, I think is really, really low. And again, people have one account, but they have Netflix on their, their PC, on their phone, on their TV, uh, and in their car, and maybe they're sharing uh, their account with their parents like I am. So again, I think uh, unsubscribing for Netflix will not really be a thing in the future. And this is in Europe and the US, but they still have a long way to go internationally. In Asia, Netflix has 25 million subscribers. Africa, Europe, and the Middle East, they have 66, South America, 37 and there's billions and billions of potential adult customers across these regions and Netflix has just begun and they just broke out um, the amounts in each region in their earnings which I think is going to be a really important thing to look watch and I'm a big fan of companies that's, that, ac that actually tells me how much money they're making per region because certain regions are more important than others and Asia will be super important for Netflix. And they've also started to, to make a lot of local content, so uh, content in, in the native languages across the world, which I think is going to be a big thing. I don't see a lot of other companies do that. And to do this, they have $8.2 billion in the bank, and they keep outspending every other company. 
And this is about half as much money as Disney has, but Netflix has produced way more shows than Netflix. And imagine having $8.2 billion in the bank and expenses aren't really rising that quickly. And with that 8 billion, they can keep spending like crazy. The spending went, uh, you know, they've been spending more, but the cash went from 1.7 billion to 8.2 billion from 16 to 20. So they can't keep up with the amount of cash they're generating. And just to put this in context, the first season of The Crown, the world's most expensive TV series, so one season, which is like 10 episodes or something, cost 130 million. So they can make 66 seasons of The Crown with their current budget. And of course, the, 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 the amount of cash is just um, skyrocketing, right? And if they can't spend it all on shows, what do you think they're gonna do? They can make acquisitions, buy more rights to other shows, they can get into streaming, sports, esports, uh, local content. They can lower prices, improve tech. You know, they, the world is at Netflix's feet. And they haven't been doing any acquisitions or expansions into other type of content yet. But with 8.2 8 billion in cash, you have to wonder what they're going to do with it. And just to have a quick look at the balance sheets, I usually do have a look at it. From 16 to 20, revenue was up 300%, net income 1,500, EPS 1,400, subs 227%. And right now, Netflix is passively making from subscribers alone $29.3 billion annually. Um, um, that's passively from subscribers that who are very, very unlikely to unsubscribe. So Netflix makes more money passively. I mean, they have to work for it, but they can just keep doing what they're doing and everyone's going to keep their subscription. They're making more money than most other companies do working their ass off. And they finally went cash flow positive. They've been operating cash flow positive for a long time, but now they, they have a free cash flow positive. And to give you three scenarios, so one, which is a, more of a bear case, the company can grow at 10% until 2030. That will put them at 526 million subs, revenue of 82 billion. And if we uh, multiply that by eight, so we keep the current valuation, um, uh, we get to $656 billion in market cap or 167% return. So I think that's the bare minimum, but that is a bare case. Case number two, if they grow, if they grow at 15% and they increase prices from $12 to $15, uh, we get to $147 billion in revenue. 1.2 trillion in market cap, that's a 380% return. <laughs> And this is this is taken taken into account no dividends, no big increase in revenue per customer, and only inflation rates increase in prices. So if you look at a bull case, I think this is still a, quite a conservative bull case. They grow at they grow subscribers at fifteen percent, and they increase prices to twenty dollars. I mean, ten years not even doubling prices, this is still quite conservative. We get to um, uh, $197 billion in revenue, a almost $1.6 trillion market cap, that's a 543% return. Now, I'm not big on, on doing these, um, these, um, these projections and bull cases, but I think this last one is more of the realistic case, which gets them to $1.6 trillion in market cap, okay? The stock has also shown real good stability and good support, even through the pandemic, although it was sort of a pandemic play, so maybe that's why. And I think Netflix is a cornerstone of most tech investors' portfolio and young people, because when you start investing, what do you buy? You buy companies you're familiar with, right? And I like doing so as well. So I think Netflix is the obvious streaming play. It has strong growth and profitability, it has a simple business model and it's easy to get familiar with it because you can use the service. Um, the, the content is improving and the rate of content is improving. They still have growth internationally. They have a super strong balance sheet and there's no controversy slash ESG concerns around Netflix. When was the last time you heard any bad press for Netflix? 
Well, have a look at Facebook, Amazon, Tesla, you name it. The CEO, Reed Hastings, also seems like a super clever guy. And he took this company from a DVD mailing service to the streaming giant, similar to what Jeff Bezos did with Amazon from a bookstore to e-commerce giant. And he's still very much so with the company. They, they have a Tangem CEO set up. So he's such a clever guy, doesn't make a big fuzz. He just knows how to run a business. And as cord cutting continues, number of screen increases, I think Netflix will increase, uh, prevail as the go-to streaming service with its original content and a superior user experience. And I think escapism isn't going anywhere. I think we live in a, an increasingly dystopian society and people want a way. And Netflix, I think, is the perfect way to do that. So by 2030, I can see Netflix being worth $2 trillion. I mean, 10 years from now, only 2 trillion. There are already companies at like 2.5. So guys, I think Netflix is the most easy to understand um, growth stock ever. They stream, they make shows and TV t and movies, that's it. And they're delivering on every single point. So I'm buying Netflix, one of my growth stocks, uh, hopefully I can hold it for a long, long time. I've been watching it for many, many years. So there you go. That's my first addition to my new portfolio. Stay tuned for the next one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in that one.